Hey, what's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And another remodel project. You know, I've had some friends tell me, Joe, you should really create another channel for your construction stuff. And uh, thank you, but it's it's really not for me. <laughs> this is uh, this is a hobby. Uh, if you're sub to me, you kind of know what you get. Uh, just some dude that likes playing with cameras and primarily drone stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I like to take y'all to work with me sometimes too. So uh, anyway, I'm doing this uh, video a little differently. Kind of more of a how-to uh, people have asked me for it, so I'm going, going to uh, try to model this after uh, Cam from Blacktail Studio. I'm a big fan of his channel. His work is phenomenal. Uh, you can check out a couple of his pictures here. Uh, check him out sometime. Uh, if you like longer format woodworking videos, he's got two plus million well-deserved subs. and The monotone narration isn't for everyone, but uh, I'll put some music and some B-roll into this, maybe spice it up a little bit. So. Um, anyway, this is at the same house as the uh, herringbone backsplash that I recently installed and uh, of which I uploaded a video as well. Uh, the customer didn't like this stone fireplace wall, so she had us give it a facelift. As you can see here, Stacy and I muscled with the uh, mantle for some time before breaking it free from the mount. Uh, if you're tackling a project like this, be mindful not to blow through the wall with your pry bar. Uh, what we did was kind of found where the wall uh, would, would flex less. Therefore, there's a stud there. So we were, we were finding the studs, prying against those, uh, and trying to uh, preserve the wall behind. Um, so we, uh, we finally got it off of the steel posts. I don't think it was epoxied on. I think it was just about like rusted on to, the, uh, to these uh, posts here, uh, which is a prefabbed post that you can buy for this exact application. Um, it certainly wasn't level, uh, as in it was tilted out a little bit, but it certainly wasn't going to fall off either. It was, it was, it was on there very well. Uh, anyway, we set this aside, uh, to cut down later to the customer's liking. We resized it, um, to be a little less beefy because it was eight inches by eight inches. Uh, what we wanted to do with this project was, uh, build a wall. Obviously we weren't leaving the stones. We're building a wall over the face of uh, the stone and uh, uh, the customer wanted to avoid an expensive and, and messy demo, which is certainly what this would have been. Uh, so we started by cutting a piece of plywood uh, to width, taking into, into account the thickness of the new wall that we were adding on. It's an inch and a half for the two by four on the flat, plus a half inch plywood. And uh, I cut it purposely short of the wall left and right. Uh, more layers are going on top, so no real need to make this super tight. Uh, give yourself some breathing room here. I was cautious to cut the firebox opening very accurate uh, because we'll trim this out later with a fire resistant hardy material, hardy siding uh, on the inside return and uh, too small of an opening uh, would, would pose problems with lining everything up. So I was uh, careful to take precise measurements on cutting the, uh, the opening for the firebox. After that, we cut some two by fours to five feet. This way they extend one foot over the top of the four foot plywood. Um, and also, so the second tier would then sit flush on top of these two by fours that extend higher than the first piece. And uh, everything would then line up. It took a little bit of shimming here and there, uh, but this technique worked out, uh, worked out great to get the substrate nice and flat. We pre-drilled holes through the wall and into the stone then remove the wall, set anchors into the pre-drilled holes, and finally attach the wall securely with uh, some four inch screws uh, into the anchors. I also put blobs of construction adhesive, construction adhesive as well. Uh, so, but the prep work is key on a project like this. The ship lap went up like butter all the way up. I mean, just because of the attention to detail in the prep work. After the second and third tiers went up, uh, it was time to level up the first piece of, I think they call it nickel gap, siding, chip lap, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, it does have about a 3 sixteenths gap, which is 16th more than a nickel. Uh, but uh, again, with good prep, this material goes up super easy. A little glue on the back, stack it and nail it. I checked for level every few courses, but it was money all the way up.
Now for the trim around the firebox. I cut the hardy trim to size, top and bottom. I put a couple stilts in here, as you can see, to hold the top. Then I cut the sides in, put those in. I actually used a couple tile wedges, tile spacers, to uh, keep everything nice and plumb, just because my cuts weren't. I did my cut with an angle grinder so they weren't dead on square. But uh, got those in there to glue, and then nailed the, the trim, the face trim, onto the hardy the inside hardy trim only. I didn't nail it to the face yet. That way I can still kind of shift those around and move them as I need to. Get everything nice and tight and snug. Okay, so next we started with the mantle. Uh, like I mentioned, the uh, customer thought the eight by eight was a little bit beefy and I would certainly agree. So we cut it down. We left it eight inches deep, but we cut it to five inches tall. Uh, with the leftover piece, we fabbed a couple of corbels to support the mantle. This was tricky, but we got it all worked out. A little bit of work with the planer and belt sander, and she was nice and flat, ready for stain.